Hello and welcome to the Foundry's Furnace Core Tutorial for Denoise. FDNoise is designed to remove noise or grain from an image sequence. Assuming there is no motion in the sequence, the best way to reduce noise is to take an average across a number of frames. This is called temporal averaging. The noise which is different on each frame will be reduced and the picture which is the same will be reinforced. Unfortunately, if there is motion in the sequence, the averaged image will be blurred as the image appears at different locations on each frame. However, by estimating the motion in the sequence using the Foundry's advanced motion estimation technology, it is possible to compensate for any motion and average the frames temporarily without introducing any blurring artifacts. If you just have a single frame you wish to actually remove the grain from, then the furnace plugin FD Grain, which is a powerful wavelet based spatial noise reducer, is likely to give better results on single images. For more information on FD Grain, please see the FD Grain tutorial. For more information on GME and LME, please refer back to the Furnace Core introductory tutorial. Before we start the tutorial, you should have downloaded the relevant image sequences and scripts from the Foundry website. Once you have done this, please open the start here script and we can begin. When you open the start here script, you should find the image sequence which will require the denoising. If we stop the timeline and go to frame 1 and click on the actual image sequence, we should bring up the node. Now I'm going to be using the tab function to bring up the denoise node. You can bring up the node whichever way you're comfortable with. When you bring up the node, you'll see it has three inputs. It has the source input, the noise input, and the vectors input. The source input you have should be connected to the sequence you wish to actually denoise, so make sure this is connected. We also have the noise input. Now, when a noise clip is supplied, the noise will be analysed in this clip, rather than the actual source clip itself. The noise clip should have similar noise characteristics to the actual source clip, and should be used when your source clip does not contain a suitable flat region on which to do the analysis. We also have the actual vector input. Now, if the motion in your input sequence has been estimated beforehand, and you have the motion vectors available, you can connect them to the vector input. Now this will save you processing time, as denoise will not have to perform the motion estimation a second time. For more information on the vector generator, please view the vector generator tutorial. Now, before you actually start any of the denoising, you'll notice that we have a widget on screen and a warning banner. Now this is saying, please set the plate size and position the analysis region over a flat area of the frame. This is the analysis widget which takes a sample of the noise. Now, in the actual parameters itself, before you do any kind of calculation, you have to actually set the original color space and the actual plate size. Now these are very important. Now it's very important to actually choose the original color space of the image sequence. Now this is important because the plugin assumes that the amount of grain is constant from light to dark and the changing color space distorts the grain response at different brightnesses. Now you need to set this to the original color space where the grain originated or was filmed from, not just where the color space exists within the actual file type. And for this particular sequence this was recorded in the linear and the color space is linear as well. So this is the option we pick for the original color space for this sequence. You also have to set the plate size. Now note, this refers to the original size of the plate, so even if you're working on a cropped part of a 2K plate, the plate size should still be set to 2. That's in the system over here. Now this is quite important, as the actual size of the original image actually is quite important to the calculation itself, as the sample size of the actual grain and noise for a 2K image is drastically more different than a 4K image, or a PAL, or a 1K image. So make sure this is set to 2K. Even though we're working on a HD clip, the 2K setting is the closest one for us to work with. 
now we've set the original color space to linear and selected the correct plate size, we still have to move the analysis widget. Now it's very important to move the sample region, which is the widget on the screen over here, to a flat part of the image. You have to make sure you don't place it over a detailed part of the image or a part of the image where there's lots of movement. Now doing this will give you poor results as the calculations will be taking noise from the information from incorrect parts. The image will appear noisy and may even introduce some blurring in parts. So if you move the widget just ever so slightly onto the nose area and press analyze, just give the widget a second, you can see that by placing over a detailed part of the image where there's also lots of movement as well, we've introduced the ringing effect which is not what we require and basically the process is invalid and the results are unusable. So what we must do is move this widget to a flat piece of the screen area where there is no detail and only the actual detail of the grain and the noise will be taken into account rather than the actual detail of the image and the characters in the actual sequence. As you can see just by moving the widget to a flat area we've improved the results drastically. So now we've got ourselves a default degrain setting over here. We've positioned the widget into a sample area which is flat and we get a good result. We've set the original color space and the plate size. We should actually check this and render the sequence out and view the results of this. So we'll go ahead and press render and we can view the results. If we play through the results we have now using the default settings of the denoise node, we can see we have performed quite a good cleanup. Now a lot of the actual noise and grain has been removed from the sequence. However, there are still some apparent parts around the blue screen areas and some parts where it flutters around is uniform on the head area. Now to remove these completely we have to go back into Nuke and adjust the advanced settings and remove the noise from the individual colour channels. So let's go back into Nuke and do this.